Hello guys, I'm the Ant Warrior and today I'm going to be explaining the life cycle of an ant. I hope you enjoy. I will also explain the process of how a queen founds her colony and the difference between a semi-claustral queen and a fully claustral queen. This is a female elate, also known as a virgin queen ant. Usually, colonies only start producing elates when they are mature, so probably around the second or third year. The male and female elates do nothing within the nest beneficial. They take up space and consume resources, so if the elates weren't there, they could produce more workers, although the elates are crucial to the survival of the species, as without them, there'd be no new colonies being produced. Many people believe that flying ant day or nuptial flight is on the exact same day every year. However, this is just untrue. Nuptial flight here in the UK usually occurs from July to August on a hot, humid day with little to no wind. When a day with the perfect conditions for nuptial flight occurs, ants will send out their elites to swarm the entrance of their nest. Just seconds after leaving the nest for probably the first time, elates will climb up to the highest altitude they can reach, probably either on a blade of grass or maybe even a tree. Elates are accompanied by workers at all times other than flying because they would make for a perfect snack for a hungry bird or a hungry predator. After reaching their desired altitude, the elates will try and fly. They may not get it first time, probably because they've not had any practice at all. This is most likely the first time they've ever flapped their wings. It may take them a few tries to get it perfect, but they always end up in the air. Once in the air, elates gather in swarms. Different ants prefer different times to fly. Some will fly quite early in the morning, or at midday, or some will even fly at night. The female elates will proceed to mate with three or more individual males. She does this to ensure that she has enough sperm to fertilise all of her young throughout her entire lifetime. After mating, male ants will unfortunately die because their only purpose in life has been completed. This means that there is no such thing as a king ant, just a queen. Straight after mating, the female elates will sever their own wings from their thorax with their legs. They are now known as deolates. Now travelling by foot, the deolates will search for the perfect place to found their colony. Once they have found their desired nesting space, they will dig a small chamber called a claustral chamber. This is where she will lay her first batch of eggs. If you're wondering why we keep queen ants in test tubes, in captivity, well, it's because it replicates their natural claustral chamber that they would have built in the wild. You will need to do a bit of research about your queen before you catch her, as some queens are semi-claustral or fully claustral. Fully claustral queens do not need to eat anything until their first workers or nanitics arrive. However, some queens like Myrmica do need to eat during the founding stages. If the queen you caught is a semi-claustral queen ant, then you have to feed her. Only feed her maybe once a week, protein and sugars, as if you feed her more than this, it can stress her out. If your queen is a fully claustral queen, then all you have to do is put her in a nice, safe test tube setup and put her somewhere dark. You can expect workers from one to two to three months, depending on the species. I'd recommend only checking up on your queen once every week at the maximum as more than that could stress her out and cause her to eat her brood. The egg is the first stage in an ant's development. Eggs are laid in batches and you can usually see them sticking together in balls. Sometimes it may look like your queen is trying to eat her eggs, although this is usually not the case. Ants lick their eggs because they have antibacterial saliva. Their saliva can stop mould growth on the eggs that might threaten the egg's life. If you ever see your queen looking like she wants to eat her eggs, she's probably just giving them a wash. It can even take a few weeks for your eggs to hatch. 
The length of time it takes for your eggs to hatch depends on the climate or the temperature that you keep your ants at. Some ants prefer a more humid, cold temperature and some prefer a hotter temperature. You really have to do your research for your specific species. The next stage of an ant's development is the larvae. Larvae are what an egg hatches into. An egg doesn't just hatch into an ant. Larvae can range from being the size of an egg to almost the same size as a queen. There really is no set in stone time of an ant's development. It really just depends on the temperature or climate your ant prefers. Sometimes it can take one week for an ant egg to hatch. Sometimes it can take up to three weeks. It just really depends on how you keep your ants and their preparations. The larvae and the queen are the only colony members that will consume protein. The larvae will use it to grow and the queen will use it to produce eggs. Larvae have four instars, which means that they have four sections of their development in that stage. After the larval stage, some species of ants will spin a cocoon and then they will pupate inside of the cocoon. They are able to spin a cocoon because they have a special silk gland that helps them produce the silk. However, some species of ants do not have this silk gland, so they pupate without the cocoon. However, they are both pupate and there is really no difference apart from the naked pupae just don't have a cocoon. You can find naked pupae in species like Mesa, Myrmica or Solenopsis, whereas you can find cocoon pupae in species like Laceus and Formica. Ants of the species Polyrachus and Ochophila can produce silk, however they prefer to use it for something a little more creative. Colonies of these genuses nest in leaves, so they use their larvae silk to glue the leaves together. They are known as weaver ants. If you're looking for any live ants at the moment, then I will be leaving some links to some trusted websites that I believe are perfect for live ants. One of these sites is Ants and I. Ants and I has, I think, just started a few weeks ago, so his website is fresh and he has quite a few different species on offer. So if you're looking for any ants at the moment, make sure you check out his website. If you have any suggestions of videos that you'd like to watch, then make sure you write it down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!